Yo, yo, yo. You see where we at with it, man. Back in the gym again. Knocked out some cardio, knocked out some core. Today was a light day. We're going to stretch a little bit after I'm done with the video. But um, let's get straight to it. So today's topic, I want to talk about why America is being invaded and why I didn't join the military uh, coming out of high school. Um, just to start things off, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, follow the page, hit my IG at A1 Supreme, or granted, at, scratch that, at A1SF underscore CEO, make sure y'all follow, um, turn on your notification bells, man, let's, let's get this work as always, but, um, so yeah, man, why America is being invaded right now. I don't know if anybody has been up on the news. I'm a millennial, 30 years old, and most millennials I know now, they get their news from social media, whether it be here on YouTube, whether it be on Instagram, TikTok, um, whatever the case may be. We're not stuck like uh, the former generations that watch CNN, MSNBC, Fox. Um, me personally, I still watch those news outlets. I watch all news outlets. I'm not really biased to anyone because really, you never really know what's going on, to be honest with you. Um, they're going to tell you what they want you to know. Uh, the truth is going to be found somewhere in the middle. So um, I watch all of them. I try to get information from each side so I can see exactly where, you know, where they're coming from and come up to my own conclusions. And just looking at the news, man, and things that's been happening these past few months, these past few years, um, it's been a lot of migration coming into the states via Texas and migrating to different states, uh, northern states, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Denver, California, um, shit, Florida. Um, it's been a lot of migration that's been coming in. And from what I've been seeing on the news, man, it seemed like they just opened it wide up for anybody to just come through. Now, granted, America is founded off of immigrants, right? That's what they say. America's foundation is built off of immigrants. Um, the Europeans uh, migrated over here and then they settled, created their land, well, colonized, however you want to call it. I have no bias. I'm not talking about whatever way it is. I'm just going off what history says. And so that's the foundation of this, this nation. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that the migration that's happening now is a bad thing, you know, or shouldn't happen because, granted, people are escaping bad situations back at their countries that they're coming back from where cartels taking over, you know, evil entities, whatever you want to call it. Um, but why I say it's being invaded is because the numbers in which that the migration is happening is outrageous. Um, and there is little that seemed like it's being done about stopping it. Now, granted, um, you know, we got states that are helping Texas out to try and close the borders down now. But um, I don't know, you know, how strong that is to be able to stop the sheer numbers that's coming over here. I mean, it's tens of thousands, damn near daily, that's migrating over here. Now, granted, I, I don't have the exact research right now, so take what I'm saying as a grain of salt. But what I want y'all to do is to do your own research, man, and look at, you know, how this thing is going. I just heard that they're giving out uh, a $53 million uh, financial uh, card to migrants that are coming over here now, uh, which... I, you know, if it's crazy or whatever, I don't know, but it's just, you know, I thought that we had structures put in place that allowed for certain things to happen a certain way, right? And when you have people that are crossing over into the border with, you know, you know, no policing whatsoever, with no stopping it whatsoever, open it up, you know, Texas is trying to shut it down and the federal government is coming and, and tearing down the, them, shutting it down. So, um, that's why I say America's being invaded because, granted, it may be being pushed from a, a place of we want to help those people out, which rightfully so. I mean, they, they're trying to escape where they're coming from. At the same time, the same evil people that want to do harm realize that 
and they may look at this as an opportunity, right? So I just, I truly don't know exactly what's going on. I'm not in the know. I'm not in the federal government. I'm not, you know, a, a border patrol agent. You know, I'm just a, a, a trainer here in, in South Florida that just watch things and, and, and come up with his own assumptions. But it's just kind of weird, man, you know, when you see how it's happening. I mean, $53 million for migrants, man, they're, they're housing them. They have sanctuary states. And let me tell you about that, man. I just recently traveled to Denver uh, not too long ago, man. And the shit that I seen was just mind boggling, dude. Like, I know, you know, you got Skid Row in California where the homeless just pretty much set up shop. They got their tents, but it, it's essentially the same thing that I'm seeing happening in these sanctuary states. I was in Denver. I seen, you know, tents lining the streets and it was snow. I'm talking about snow white outside, cold as shit. People sleeping on the sidewalk and that shit just really struck me as confusing because I'm like, Colorado, I think this is, I look at this and I see like, you know, Midwest America, you know, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a little bit, you know, I would think be more so upper class or whatever the case may be, but it wasn't like that, man. I seen countless numbers of tents and people just sleeping on the side of the road and that shit was just mind boggling. Um, we had a layover in Philadelphia, and as I got off the plane, I saw this little Spanish girl helping out uh, the, the baggage um, carriers, you know, carry the baggage off. Now, I'm not trying to be biased or prejudiced in any type of way, but she didn't look like, um, she didn't look like, how can I put this in a respectful manner? She didn't look like, uh, uh, Americanized Spanish person, put it that way. She she looked like she, you know, had just came over here. And I'm glad, you know, she got some work. She she probably is doing something for her family, which is a good thing. I also seen when I was in Denver, uh, getting off the plane, you know, uh, a Spanish family come together. Like I saw a girl, we, we got off the plane and we hopped on uh, uh, the Metro mover to get us to the other terminal. And it was a, another Spanish uh, older lady. She got off the, at the same terminal that we got off, or that I got off rather. And you know, there was Spanish family there waiting for her. When she came running, they came running with open arms and crying as if they hadn't seen any seen each other in years, man. And, and listen, like I say, I'm not, I'm nobody special. So I'm just speaking off of the things that I see. Um, though in those instances, that's the right move because those people are trying to get away and escape from what it is that they're coming from. But listen, man, evil don't play by the rules, right? Bad people don't play by the rules. They do things, you know, outside of the rules so that they can get their, you know, they can get their stuff pushed forward, right? And so when you look at it, man, you see middle-aged men, you know, such as myself, you know, that in certain videos that's out there that's circulating of people that just are, you know, denounce, not denouncing America, but yeah, really denouncing it, throwing middle fingers up to the, to the, to the American people and you know just you know seem like it's they got bad intentions right just looking at it it seems like they may have bad intentions so uh, these are some of the reasons why i say america is being invaded um how do you stop it i don't know man talk to the people at capitol hill maybe this is what they want to happen you know, just going back to COVID when things got shut down and a lot of speculation was going on about what is this virus all about? Is it man-made, this, that, and the other? You know, maybe this is all part of the big pe big plan. You know, I could come up with speculation, but the, the reality is we don't know. So in situations like this, as American people, um, as Americans rather, you know, it's kind of tough to gauge how to maneuver around it, right? I don't want to be on the wrong side of history and say, shut down all of the borders, put up the wall, and there's people that's dying and, and, and trying to you know, seek asylum, seek help. At the same time, I don't want to be too passive and just let anything happen and now America becomes a third world country. But when you look at things and how stuff is changing, um, as far as inflation is concerned, um, the economy, uh, jobs laying people off, um, it, it shows all of the telltale signs of moving to 
that pendulum going towards being becoming a third world country, right? And um, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, I guess only time will tell, and we'll have to wait and see. But I will say this though. I, I, I like to think of myself as a history buff. I, history was one of my, you know, favorite classes back in school. And if you know anything about the fall of Rome, the things that we're seeing right now are strikingly similar to what's happening uh, today, or what happened back then, rather. Um, so, you know, anybody can make a case either which way, right? Nothing's right, nothing's wrong. I think what's happening is what's happening. Uh, all good things come to an end. Uh, we might be witnessing the fall of America. Might, don't take my word for it, nigga. How your life is, you know? Look at your life. I think that'll give you a good gauge of what's going on, man. If, it's, if you're struggling and it's tough for you to go out there and get the basic necessities, right, and you don't see any way out, um, what you think? You know, do you see that the help is on the way? And and listen, I'm all for self-preservation, man. Ain't nobody gonna help you out here. You gotta go out there and get it on your own. Shit, that's the reason why I'm making these videos now. I just gotta put in the work for myself. Ain't nobody trying to hear a grown 30-year-old man crying about the state of the economy and, 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 and shit that's going on like that. Nigga, get your ass up and, and protect and provide. That's what you're supposed to do. So, you know. That, those are just some of the reasons why I think America is being invaded, you know? Um, I, I truly, not me personally, just giving my personal opinion, that's the reason why I think America is being invaded. Because, granted, if it's coming from good intentions, a lot of times good people get taken advantage of. Like, I come from, I've been in the dark side as far as, like, working the nightlife and working security and, and seeing things, you know, on the other side as opposed to people that may, you know, be godly in, in the church. I've been, I'm in the church too, but a lot of times those people get blinded on a false reality of what the world is, thinking that everything is always going to be good, everything's always going to be positive, man. Like, nah, man, that shit, you know, those people get taken advantage of and, you know, where's the protection for them? Because they were being nice and, and, and think about it, even with yourself, the times where you were so nice to people that were just taking straight advantage of you, man, just taking straight advantage of your kindness and using it as a weakness, right? That's the same thing on a grander scale with, with, with the country, man. That's, you know, how I look at America, how I look at life in general, right? I, I look at it from a lens of my life. So how things are going in my life is put on a bigger scale to what the whole world is about. Even though the world it doesn't revolve around me, I know I play a part in it. And certain ideals and things that I do are the same ideals and things that happen in reality, you know? So no, nothing's escaped from that. Nothing can be escaped from that. So that's my reasoning on why I think America is being invaded, man. I think that we're being too nice and we've been nice. And, you know, people take advantage of that niceness. They look at it as a weakness, man. And, um, you know, only time will tell what's going to happen. Only time will tell. I will say this. Um, no matter who you want to vote for, Trump, Biden, whatever, um, it's my opinion. I don't think any of them is the right person, in my opinion. I don't think Biden is, you know, honestly, I don't think he's, uh, enough to be able to take on, you know, the stresses of what's going on. I mean, I think this man is out of touch with, you know, the modern society. I, that's that's my thinking. And I think a lot of people that back by and are out of touch as well because there a lot of them are from the older generation, right? Like I said, I'm a millennial. So I think a lot of the older generation, like my mother, um, people who are diehard Democrats, I think they're kind of out of touch with how things are moving and how fast things go, um, you know, and how indoctrinated they have been to how the reality of the world was back when they were our age, but now things are changing. And at the same token, I don't think Trump is the best alternative either because this man is radical, you know? He is, um, he, he, uh, some of the things he say, you know, I just, I, I kind of stand weary of it because when you start moving off of numbers and facts and statistics, who does these things benefit? When you say make America great again, well, when was America great and for who was America great for? 
Um, I think at this present moment as a state for black people, I think this might be the best time America has ever been for African Americans, in my opinion. But when you say make America great again, you know, it seemed like you want to take it back to the 50s, 60s, 40s, 30s, and 20s, where our people were segregated and, and treated less than. And then you can even look at it and think the small policies that's happening. I'm here in South Florida, man. They, in, in Broward County, they just came out with a list of schools that they're planning on closing down or selling to, you know, create affordable housing. So they say, sounds like projects to me, but those schools ain't nothing but black schools. I don't see any of, you know, the predominantly white schools that are placed on those numbers. I see nothing but black schools that's being placed on those lists. And what they're saying is, okay, well, um, the enrollment is down and, you know, we're thinking about putting it up. We got about 18 months to see exactly what it is that we want to do, what we want to come up with. And from a, a business mindset like that I have, what I'm hearing is, we got 18 months. That sounds like y'all shopping the schools and it, within those 18 months, if the biggest bidder comes and buy it, y'all gonna sell it. So it's either the biggest bidder will come and buy it or, you know, you're fucked, <laughs> essentially. That's how I see it. And, you know, then you, you got the critical race theory that they talk about uh, with the governor here. And, you know, some of those things are just lined up as tactics, in my opinion, to set up for something bigger, to set up for, you know, a, a, a deeper agenda. I don't know. You know, take this with a grain of salt, but I'm just speaking on off of the things that I feel. So this is why I'm saying I think America's being invaded, and I, 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 it may be a part of the grander scheme for whatever it is that they got going on. You know, I think when Trump, if Trump gets back in office, I do not think for African Americans it will be all great like they think it will be, like they think it was back in 2020. I do not think that at all. I think if you're African American and you think that Trump getting back in office is going to benefit you, um, you must be careful. That's my opinion. Because uh, history shows, man. Like, and some of the stuff, they, the rhetoric that they're saying, bro, you know, shutting down the borders and, and mass deportation and, you know, cutting crime down. Do y'all know what that looks like and what communities these affects? Because they already tell you the communities that's being hit the most by crime, right? So when they want to police crime more and, and, and really go harder on crime, what communities are they really talking about, man? Let's, let's get real about this thing. So I don't think Trump would be the best alternative either. Now, who do you vote for? Is it Robert F. Kennedy? I don't know. I, I don't know too much about his policy and what he thinks to say he probably would be the best choice. I don't I don't know. Um, but you, you make your own conclusion and you come up with what you think would be the best and uh, pray. <laughs> pray. So that's that's just a little bit of some I thought of, uh, on why I think America is being invaded. Um, you know, only time's gonna tell. Now going into the next topic as far as why I didn't join the military coming out of high school. So now why I wanna talk about this is because it kinda correlates to what I'm talking about now. Back when I was in high school, I had a, a, a moment where I was going to join the military. Now I played football, my, my dream was to get a scholarship to the University of Miami. It didn't quite work out that way. I had some, you know, things that kinda railroaded me and stopped me from getting to that next level. But, you know, my thinking was, all right, well, you know, maybe they didn't offer me a scholarship, what I could do, I can join the Army, you know, hit the school at West Point, play on their football team, transfer out in a couple of years, and then hit, you know, the school I went to. That was my thinking. So I called the recruiter. I was going to do it. But in, um, in essence, in, in the time for me to go ahead and make that decision to show up and actually hit the recruiting office, I thought about it and I said, nah, man, this isn't what I want to do for my life. Like, why am I going to put my life on the line for a country essentially that don't give a fuck about niggas like me. That's what I was thinking. This is how I felt. And I was like, why would I, why would I, you know, go ahead and die about a country that don't care about me, man? That's, that's what I thought. And um, those were the reasons why I didn't join the military. That was actually the main reason why I didn't join the military because I felt like at the time, you know, we had the Trayvon Martin stuff happening. Uh, I graduated in 2012, by the way. So we had the Trayvon Martin stuff that had happened. And, you know, police brutality was kind of big. Black Lives Matter, I think, was just coming into the motion. I was kind of, I was stuck on those ideals because, 
you know, as a young kid, you just follow what your what your what your mama, what your grandma, what your you know people around you say. You don't never you don't necessarily have your own mind. And um, you know, thinking like that, I just said, yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Mm -mm, not doing it, not at all. Um, now, me at 30 years old, I look back on it and I say, maybe I should have did it. You know, maybe I should have joined the military because outside of, you know, putting my life on the line for things for a country, it's more so about the benefits that it could gain me, you know, in the future, as far as the connections with people that I, that I could have built, um, the, 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 uh, the benefits that it gives as far as with housing and, and financial support and just the, you know, the network, the overall, the look of being in the military and people, you know, people look up to that standard, man. You, you're, you're a military guy. They know you're a stand-up guy. Most of them, they know that you're a stand-up person. So those are um, some of the reasons why I look back at it now and say, damn, maybe I should have joined the military, you know? Um, and then also now, man, me having a kid and seeing how things are happening, um, I think that for my son and for the future generations that come after me, it's a duty that we owe right now to those futures. Like, right, I said I don't want to put my life on the line for a country that don't give a fuck about me. But in, in all reality, man, I don't think it's any other nation, you know, outside of the U.S. that's as good to Africans or to blacks as it is now. Now, I don't know too much about the continent of Africa. I should do more research on that. I, I give y'all that. I concede. I should do more research on it. But at the same time, I just, you know, America is what I know. I'm, I'm used to it, man. I, I'm used to America. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and this is my home. So, you know, I don't see any other country that's really beneficial, as beneficial for Africans or for black people as it is, you know? I think in other places that you go to, they may still be, you know, an undertone of innate racism or prejudice against our kind that we we know is here in America but might not see because of how modern society is kind of, you know, modernized and come to an understanding about our culture. Now, granted, they, they still, you feel me? They still, we know, <laughs> you feel me? Like, it ain't no bullshit and beat around the bush. Everybody want to be a nigga until it's time to be a nigga. That's just the reality of it. But um, speaking that, that's another reason why I probably should have joined the military because now that I have my son and I'm seeing how things are happening as far as with the country, me saying the country, quote unquote, being invaded and, and things happening, uh, laws happening that affect um, our society, I owe a duty to my child for, you know, him to have, you know, a nation that he can grow and be his best possible self, right? So if I sit here and be selfish and be like, nah, I'm just looking out for myself, right? And then we do go out into all our war, World War Three, whatever the case may be, and we lose, <laughs> America loses, do we know what society will look like? right the losers of war uh, i don't think they really want society to be that way because now the people that's going to be in charge if we were to lose something like that the people that would be in charge are in control of the narrative of how we live and like i said i don't see any other nation out there that's as beneficial for Africans or black people as America is right now, as far as opportunity is concerned, having the opportunity to do much. So, um, my duty is for my son to be able to have a nice life and, and have be afforded all the opportunities to grow and be his best self, you know, come up with ideas and create them ideas to the way that he wants to do it and with, with complete freedom as opposed to systems put in place to keep you marginalized just because you lost the war, just because now the, the, the society has shifted and changed because one other nation is presiding over how things are governed. So those are, that's just my reason why I think now nah, I probably should have joined the military. Or, you know, even now at 30, I'm not, it's not too, too late, but man, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that <dude. laughs> We ain't joining that shit. <laughs> will, I, will I um encourage my son to enjoy it? 
Probably not, but you know, if that was a choice that he wanted to make to better himself, you know, I just would tell him as a man, like, listen, bro, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. If you see, if you, if it makes sense, that's it. If it makes sense. So, you know, we in the gym, we getting these gains. I hope y'all hit the gym. I hope y'all, you know, continue to work out. I hope y'all keep pushing and striving to be your best most authentic self because ultimately that's what this is all about right uh take the time to, to do your research like, like as i will i'll get better at this and do my research on the things that's going on on the current affairs hey man listen if you disagree with the things that i'm saying man hit the comments and let me know you know completely let me know what's going on let me know what you think I, all you know information is welcome here i'm not gonna sit here and bash any of it man i don't I, that's not you know my my dna that's not who i am man i, I don't got all the answers to this shit. i don't got all the you know the rules of how things are supposed to go i'm just another person speaking on you know from what i see from my perspective so put your perspective out there and don't be afraid to be uh to be seen and be heard and like i always say let's get it quick second half